make a motion. Are you on? You want it on your camera there, Missy? Would you like to? I, 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 I yeah, might as well. Well, come on. Now, it, there it goes. Okay. All right, I'm calling the meeting to order at 6 o'clock, and we're immediately going into non-public referencing RSA 91-A-32 personnel. Sure. Roll call? Yes. Denise, yes. Okay, I'm sorry, we're going to, it's not going to be... Well, we've only used three minutes so far. Battery. So, it appears, Kate, that I double booked. You oh, you can, double booked um, me? <laughs> <laughs> she was transfer, so I apologize if you had to wait. I don't um, like being in Group B. Group B's pretty good. Yeah, we're I'm good. missing a 12 year old birthday party. I can be late. Well, you, if you want to come up, because I promised you, so okay. go ahead up. Well, not, not public with your request, right? No. Okay, no. why not? No, no, no. I just, um, two things. Uh, the printer situation. Yes. So, my printer is currently working, but on its last leg. So this is I, the old one. The old one. Okay. So, I ordered a new cartridge for it. And the question is, why did you order a new cartridge at 170 bucks? Because we may be getting a new one. So Tom has come in and set Andrea up to be able to do DMV work with me. But this particular printer will not allow us both to print from it. But the new printer will. Oh, OK, that's good to know. So my question to you is, I didn't want to order the new printer and have you say, well, is the old one dead? And I'd say, no. Um, should I return the cartridge, keep that as a backup, order the new one so the two of us can print? Well, can she, can she, okay, so this printer is strictly printing for DMV? Yes. Okay, so, I mean, does it make sense for her to have her own and then she's not interfering when you're both doing it at the same time? It kind of works. We have a station between us so that as we print, we can just pull from it. It's not really... You mean the new one? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, we if we have the cartridge, if we use it as a spare, but we wouldn't put any more money into it going forward, and maybe if they hook her up, then you at least have two printers if something happens with the new one. I don't know. True. I mean, I think it's a good backup because new doesn't necessarily mean better. You know, we could have as much trouble with a new one as we've had. Well, they both have the same standards, right? They both have the they double do. trays and all of that. The problem is the state has cheaped out on their paper now. And the paper quality creates a problem with the rollers. And that's why we've got the new one. Yeah. So do you think that well, we should I haven't just... bought the new one yet. Oh, well, when you go and yeah. buy the new one. So. Yeah, I think we'll have the same problem. But this one's like 14 years old. I don't think we're going to have a problem right off. Well, also, your rollers probably could be replaced. We did that, help. too. Oh, we already did yeah, that. Yeah, that done twice. Um, yeah. yeah. So, I just wanted to let you know before I order the new one that the other one is not completely dead. But it allows Andrea and I to both. I think we should go forward because it sounds like it's... Yeah, now that, you know, I'm really excited about the Tuesday, Thursday nights. If she can jump in because I know, that's it's usually I mean. six or eight people for just cars. And it's hard for her to be like, well, we only have one DMV station. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's... I mean, we've got her hooked up and she's all ready yeah, to go. It's just so she printer. should be hooked up for the printer. Yeah. Um, but do you want me to return the cartridge from the old one? How much was it? 167. No, I want you to hold it. Okay. I want you to hold it have a backup. at this point and have a backup. Well, you got to use it now until you yep. get your printer, right? Right, true. So, um, okay. I so, I want to go over that. What do you think, Jessica? Yeah. I mean, it's already been paid for and everything's all taken care of, right? So. Where did you buy the cartridge? Uh, Computer Hut. Oh, wow. So, I'm on a network with all town clerks, and we usually have the same printers, and that is the best price. Yeah, I was thinking, I was thinking like, Best Buy or something will totally overcharge you, but yeah, no, we kind of network and you know everybody tries to find the best price and then they put it out there. Printer, so yeah, it's hard to find. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. Um, and secondly, I came in because the transfer station uh, revision, which I'm thrilled about, um, I want to be part of because it really affects our office in a, in a, in a big way. Um, and I just want to give you some background, like just this 
week or this the last two weeks. And the transfer station, you guys have been amazing. Uh, you know, a couple showed up with a truckload of furniture and a bunch of junk, and they moved into their son and daughter's home. And they came in and they're like, well, they wouldn't let us go to the transfer station. I'm like, okay, well, where are you from? Well, we were in London, Gary. We moved in with our son. Okay, so where's the stuff coming from? Well, it's from our old house. Well, no, you, you can't have a dump sticker and you're not bringing it here. And we're seeing more and more of that. We had an irate customer this week who literally, they go to their closing at 10 o'clock. They're at our window at 11. They want a dump sticker. And they have Massachusetts plates. They're like, well, no, you have to prove residency. Well, I bought the house. Well, that doesn't mean that you're going to live in it. And when you buy a house, it's empty. Like, Sometimes. What, do you, what do you have on the trash? <laughs> well, no, I mean, you don't usually buy a property that's loaded with stuff. Um, so I have some, some recommendations for the board going forward. Because with the prior board, um, and, and I call this, when we started giving dump stickers out to 2nd Street, 2nd Street are six unit condos, eight of them, and they all have their own dumpster. And for years, we didn't issue transfer station passes to them. But a prior board said, their owners, they should get a sticker. And I said, you watch our tonnage is going to go up. And sure enough, it's gone up. Because we can't find a document that said that they are to, uh, being a six unit building, have a dumpster and you know not be using a recycling center. So we have this fine line of people who own and people who should be able to get a transfer station pass. I disagree with Second Street or any unit three or more. Like the building over here, there's four units. You know, he gets eighteen hundred dollars a month for rent, and we're issuing dump stickers. There's four units; they should have a dumpster. And I think that that should be three units or more for buildings like this and here and Second Street, because that's where our tonnage is coming. I think our building debris and our overall trash is building. So I feel that we should bring it to three units, and I, I think Second Street's a whole other situation that you know we shouldn't have been issuing. That's another 40 stickers where you know there's six units in those buildings, and they do have dumpsters, and they change over all the time. So every time a property changes over, you know it's a sofa, two beds, it just keeps adding up and. And I also think uh, we need to limit how many transfer station stickers we give. We have a particular electrician in town who has, I think, five or six vehicles, and he wants one for all six of his vehicles. And at the window, I say, you know, no, because those six vehicles go to six different jobs. They're not Rollins, for it, but we're taking all the junk in. So we have these particular cases which... In the prior board, I would say no to, they'd go to the board and the board would say, oh yeah, everybody, you own land, you own company cars, you own, you get as many as you want. And I think we need to tighten that. And I, I love the fact that people are going to have to have um, building permits to be disposing stuff up there because, yeah, there's construction going on in town, but there's not that much. And the problem with people, residents, being able to purchase one because they own property. We have people who own property in town who also own in Salmsworth and Dover and Rochester and, you know, we've all seen it. I've seen the trailers come down Salmsworth Road and right over to the transfer station. You know, you, you see it and we need to somehow... How would you control that? I think that, I think that just because you own property does not mean that you should be able to do a transfer station pass. I think that your average person who comes in who has a home should get a transfer station. I think if you have someone who doesn't live there, it should go before the board. And I think if they're cleaning out an apartment, they should get a one-day pass or a weekend pass. But to get a year pass to come in every single week, 
I just think that's where a lot of the abuse is. I guess I misunderstood you. you. I thought you said that you have a property owner who lives here, but also owns places elsewhere. Yeah. How would you control that? You've got to give him a pass if he lives here. Oh, no, no, no. I, I know some that, I'm sorry, don't, doesn't live here. Oh, you're but, saying property, a property, right. like someone owns property in our town right. and somewhere else in multiple places. And currently places. it says if you own property, you get a sticker for a year. And I think that needs to be done. Even for a non-resident. Mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't say you get it for a year, but you, or you, or it you use it. Yes, yeah. you, you may use the The chain. people in your property who live there get it. Residents get it, but also but it says property owners. It doesn't really define uh, to what degree, whether they get an annual sticker or whether they get a one-day pass, one pass. But they Which do I guess, if somebody moves out and wants you to jump, yeah. yeah, you should be able to bring that up. Right. But when you're coming in week after week with, you know, a trailer load, no, I get and he's got, they know, I'm there three days a week. I see the people coming in. <laughs> I'm like, really? You know, you, Mr. and Mrs., you're in your 50s and you got to spray a little load of trash again. But it doesn't say they're out of state, out of town home, homeowners it, on the stickers. It just gives right. the same sticker so that mm -hmm. you don't have that option to see it anyway. So I guess what I'm asking for is my support with the board that when I say to somebody, this is an unusual situation. I'd like you to go before the board. You know, we're not going to issue you a sticker. In the past, everybody gets a sticker. Everybody ended up coming back getting a sticker. And it was as though it was wasted effort on our part. And, you know, we're residents. We're paying taxes. We just want to see it used properly. Some, every transfer station around is cutting way back. You know, Dover, Portsmouth, they are very tough. They're ripping open bags. They're looking for building permits. Everybody's getting tough because, you know. It's a big cost. Yeah, it is. And ours is wonderful, and I, I can't expect them to know who's moved out and moved in. Um, oh, the other thing I want to talk about is the price, because my new stickers are coming in. I do want to sell them in November. And I think I'm going to go up to the transfer station and sell them, because... Um, I want to see who's coming in. I mean, we've had over 40 homes sell in the past, I don't know, six months. And I think we've got people that are still <laughs> sliding in. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to be the bad guy. I don't want to be a cop. I don't want to, but it's not right. Mm -hmm. You either live here or you don't. Mm -hmm. And it either comes from here or it doesn't. So I'm just asking the board for your support when I send somebody to you, send me an email and ask why I'm concerned. Okay. You know, maybe it's because I pass them on Route 4 every Saturday morning when they're coming from Dover with a trailer load. And I'm like, mm, it's not right. Okay. So, that's Thank the you. scoop, and I will attend. We're going to have a, a meeting, public meeting. Public hearing. Um, oh, yes, about the transfer station. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sure. That's, that's it for me. Thank you for coming in. Okay. All righty. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thanks again. Good work. All right. Approval of minutes for September um, 23rd. Are you okay with those? Yes. Okay. Approved by consensus. Community input? Yeah. All right. Town clerk is gone. Police. I guess I have one item, but I know that you need to talk to me about the cruiser. Um, the proposal that I did for the salaries for you folks a couple months ago that you approved, mm -hmm. just want to be aware of the fact that um, Officer Malatek, uh, according to the proposal, will be due for an increase on October 6th, which will be next week. So you already approved it, so I just want to make sure that you're aware of it, that it will go in effect next week, and I will let Caroline know on the appropriate payroll set that it goes up to okay. the 22-22. Could you do You've done an excellent job so far. There's, there's no reason not to, to give it to them. So. Okay. Would you mind writing that up for them to sign so it could go in their file sure. on a piece of paper? Okay. Thank you. That's all I have to do. All right. Well, that was an easy one. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, um, I have proposed ordinance revisions, but that was last week. That was last week. Okay, so that can come on. Did we, um, did you set up, I, I don't recall offhand, is there a public hearing date for that? Yeah, you were going to, you were going to put it on your calendar at some point. Yeah, so. Okay. <laughs> for the signs, right? 
Um, so the travel, restri travel restrictions and the, and the, uh, the speed, the speed yeah. change. Okay, I will get that. All right, cruiser funding. Cruiser funding. Cruiser funding. Contingency. <sighs> All right, there was a loop. <laughs> By all, I guess, yeah. All right, so it isn't as bad as it was. We thought it was going to be, right? Correct. And we've got that confirmed by? We do not have anything in writing, but it would be prudent to decide, um, you know, hypothetically, once we get this letter from DRA, um, where you're getting the funding for the cruiser lease. Okay. Um, and this only affects this year, right? Oh, it affects only this year because she's going. We are going to work together to make sure it's not the case. Each next year, you year. have to put it in. No. no. Well, um, typically, no. Okay. This year, we're going to have to revisit this article again next year. That is not normally what would ever have to happen. Okay. All right. So, you kind of want to put on the record what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, we have been notified by the Department of Revenue that there was a one-word error in the article for the police cruiser lease, which negates the ability to use CIP funding for all of it. So we can use CIP funding for the $13,000 to equip the vehicle, um, but in order to take delivery of it this year, we need to find $12,000 in the operating budget. Which we can for the lease payment. We have it in fund contingency. Thank goodness. Oh, thank you. Um, so the wording was I forget what the word was. Um, the wording was that um, this um, lease agreement does um, can, it contains um, an escape clause or just something to that effect. That you can back out of the lease. Right, but so. really it should not have said that. It should have actually said the opposite. Okay. It does not have an escape clause. Correct. Right. Because having an escape clause, using CIP money, is for a long-term purchase, and that's why it's for this particular case, because it's coming out of CIP. Right. Yeah. That would be a problem, because it's supposed to be a long-term purchase. Right. And then, okay. theoretically, and you can sell the vehicle or not continue to lease it or after something after the one year, which would negate the ability to use the right. CIP. Okay. So. Makes sense, yeah. It does make sense. So. We'll have to watch that going forward. Okay. And they didn't catch it either. They didn't they review our yeah. warrants as well. Why not? So, before. So, good Lord. Okay, so should we make it a motion that we can take it out of contingency? I think that's good. Okay. Idea. Yes. All right. <clears throat> I'll make it. Is 12000 even? Yes, for the lease payment. Okay, I'll make a motion that we apply the $12,000 lease payment for the new cruiser um, instead of CIP. Seconded. All right. Did I say added contingency? Yeah. I think I did. Okay. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Motion passed. Okay. So, and then you can use all of this equipment that's going on through CIP. Correct. Okay. So, just as a point of information, this changes depending on how the board chooses to address it in um, on next year's warrant. We now have. Twelve thousand dollars in CIP that you weren't going to have. Yeah. So true. you know, I'm not sure you know how or you know to what degree we're going to be able to access it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just something to think about. Right. That changes. Right. We have that additional twelve thousand in there now. Yeah. So. so Okay. Um, at least we can get this still. <laughs> I was a little worried. When are you taking ownership of it? Uh, well, I was just going to mention that uh, they anticipated arriving in New Hampshire on Saturday. Okay. So I imagine we should be getting a call from the dealership sometime next week. Okay. Um, after uh, I've actually heard from the, the salesperson in uh, at Group Only Ford about the lease, and um, he, I need to connect him with with, with Caroline. Mm -hmm. so, but I was waiting for the meeting tonight to, to mm -hmm. send in the information to contact Caroline for that paperwork. Okay. So. All right. Um, the paperwork is later on the agenda, but the paperwork requires some information about the vehicle that I don't have. So I've sent you an email about that, and if you want to stop by tomorrow, you can see the form and see sure. okay. what's required. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. That's all that I have to do. Anything else for me? That's it. All right, Drew. All right. Have a great night. Thank you.
which is how it is in October 7th. Yeah. And that's still on. And yeah. what time? 530. 530. <coughs> All right. Very good. And are we having our meeting there afterwards? Or are we coming back here? Well, so that's later in the agenda. It's something that needs to get oh, yeah, um, okay. decided because we are, um, you're receiving the Stratford Regional Planning Director. Mm -hmm. And if, um, if we can't be firm about a time and location, then we ought to postpone it. With them? Yeah, yeah. which we've already done. A yeah. couple of times. So, mm -hmm. yeah. okay. All right. Anyway, okay. So, I look forward to meeting them all. So, is it going to be all of your employees? Uh, I think so, right now, including your snow flowers and maybe not Mike. Who? Mike Stinney may not make make it. But okay. I mean, but your snow guy. Everybody else might be the good. transportation good. guys. Good. Yeah. I haven't really met a lot of them, so that would be nice to meet them. Um, okay. Um, transfer station ordinance revisions. Oh, do you want to do a PO? All right, you can do it. You can, but you can go above him. <laughs> I'll get a PO for thirty-five hundred dollars. This long green cleaning. Oh, okay. So I already put it in, but I put it currently. It's done though, right? No, it isn't. Oh, it's, uh, it, it, most of it's done. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. I have a purchase order number 1752 Belmore Sewer and Drain for catch basin cleaning for the amount of 3500 All right, I'll second it. Any discussion? No. Discussion. Um, yeah, they might have to add. We, we got about 10 more to do, and they already sent us a bill because they thought they were done. Oh. So it may be. So. What? What'd you figure? Um, $4,300. Another eight hundred dollars. Maybe if it's another full half day, it would be approximately another eight hundred dollars. So can we just revise it? I would revise that and just bring it up to forty three hundred. Right now, the bill was. Oh, all right. So then it's there. so four thousand dollars will do it. Then it's an extra eight hundred dollars. So four thousand dollars would do it. Um, but it's probably better to revise it now than to have him come back, come back to the board about it. You, um, you okay? Do, do we the know budget that? the budget figure is thirty five hundred dollars, just right. so you know. So and that's because we're doing the ones on the state road, right? No, we're not doing ones on the state road. We're doing all of them. Well, I know all of ours, not the state ones. You're not doing well. And we're inspecting all. Of, uh, what we're doing is an inventory of all our what types of shapes they're in. Okay. It's taking a little longer to do this. Talk. Oh, okay. So who, is the state doing theirs? I haven't talked with the state about doing this, but. Uh, that's we we don't have the authority to go in there and do theirs. No, but we have. We should be notifying them that they should be doing it because of stormwater, and they should be following the same rules that we have to follow. Correct. Well, in principle, we have no teeth behind that, and we don't know what their MS4 permit dictates them to do, and when it dictates them to do it. But in theory, yes. Okay, when we fill out our MS4 and we talk about Rollinsford and the other thing that we're doing in Rollinsford, does it eliminate all of the state-owned roads? Yes. It's listed? Well, they, we, it is, that is not our MS4 district. If it, if it is state-owned, it is state-owned and we are not responsible for it. However, you know, they flow in and out of each other. I was going to say, but one goes into the other, so how do we control that? You don't. You can't. Ultimately, you don't have any authority to. It's worth a conversation, for sure, back and forth, but in the end, you know, they're their own organization that's going to do what they want, they want, and they're separately accountable, even though we're interconnected and affecting each other. Yeah, we can't stop the water from coming down one street and going into this. I know, but I, I, we no, can't I, I do it. It's real hard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we have to do it, but that one, if they don't do it, it affects what we do. It just... Yeah. Seem the good news is, though, they're not. You're not pulling a lot of stuff no, out. We're, no, we're, actually, we're, we're going to probably be able to skip next year. And and so the the, the With moral their of, So the moral of that story is there's not oh, a lot is of. Is it not going to be enough to take out? When oh, I know, but, out? So what that means is that there's not stuff, you know, for them to clean out. So it's yeah. not spilling into our stuff as much. I know, but you know. every year can be different. For sure. So. However, they are under the same regulations with regard to plowing and not using sand. Mm -hmm. So really, in theory, there shouldn't be anything different about their catch basins than our catch basins. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. It's only this road. It's only Main Street, right? Correct. Front Street. Yeah. Front is a state road? Um, not the Black Bean side, but the Golden South Grove side is. There's one 
one or two on Front Street going towards this tra uh, the town line. Really? That's that's a state road? The state, yeah, the mm -hmm. state comes out of Maine it's and takes the left and goes to the bridge and comes back. That's state bridge, too? Huh. And then there's one catch basin on Rollins Road at the bottom of Heritage that would be state. Yeah, or two. That would be state. One on each side of the road. Okay. Alright. So the one over by the fire station isn't state? Yes. That is state. Yeah, because that's the state road. That's part of Main Street. Okay. And they may have some on Portland Ave mm -hmm. that, that don't flow into our system. I don't know if there's any out there. I don't know. But if they are, they don't flow into our system. Right. Okay. All right. So, do we need a, a revised mo uh, motion? Um, I, I would just so um, an amended motion. A motion to amend. A motion to amend. And what did you say you wanted to make it? Four. Just four, four thousand. George, you think well, that's two days and it was three thousand thirty-one hundred. So if they go longer than that half a day, which you're going to get, you know, I don't want to be charged for a whole day. So it's whatever you think is coming up. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, if we're using the left-hand contactor, or what I call my lower contactor, the left-hand one, the attendant standing to the left has to look, has to get to the right to see that side of the guy. So if it was in the center, with the old stick. So you're saying go. because now your motor vehicle ones have been moved. Yeah. It's open underneath the mirror. That's what I was thinking. It might be better to have it right in the center of the windshield where it's right there no matter which way they're coming in. Is it allowed there though? I don't know. Sticker was. As long as it's not obstructing the view. Yeah. Talk yeah. About why not? Why did they move the stickers? Can why the DMV ones? Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know why they you did. You can still put your easy passes and whatnot up there. Oh okay. yeah, my easy pass so, is there. Yeah. So if yeah. my easy pass is there, where am I going to put it? Yeah, it's not going to block your easy pass. Right below the easy. The stickers are only what? Maybe. So. It doesn't need to see your easy pass anyway. It doesn't need to. It doesn't matter if no. the easy pass is Yeah, it, that won't affect the easy pass. Yeah. You can put your sticker right under the easy pass. Yeah. Okay. Then, that's, then I won't see that thing right there in my spot. Mm -hmm. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, what's up with my hat? I had a little... I had a windshield with a little with a little black piece on it, so it hide the easy pass. <laughs> so. And we have to list every manure that we take. I don't know if we had to, but you, that one there said horse. Okay. But if you're going to take horse, why not take goat Garbage. and sheep? Well, you could. What's the difference? You could, and that's open for discussion. I added horse to be clear because of history, and the history is that it says later that it has to be you know it has to be brought in plastic bags because. Someone continually that's brought five. That's domestic animals. I think that's more Maybe cat domestic dog. versus farm. That's more cat and dog. It was dog. Section. Like somebody just would keep bringing five gallon pails, not in a bag, and yeah. dumping it right in the compactor, mm -hmm. which should not be that's happening. Nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This, ends, this ends up actually having the compost pile. Mm -hmm. The horse manure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we don't want to put the dog waste in the, so, in in the compost the pile. You want, dog Why? waste needs to be thrown away. Why? Because dogs, dog, dogs are a meat eating, meat eating animal. Mm -hmm. You can't mix it in with compost. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not. It turns more bacteria. Yeah. Rather than yeah. Cows. That's the issue we have with storm water. Storm water. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's two totally separate animals, if you will. <laughs> so do you address dog waste here? I don't know if dog waste was listed, but or dog or cat there waste. was. Um, there was a section in there about uh, domesticated animals. Okay, that would be anybody in the... More dog and cat. So it's under number three, letter B, the disposal, the disposal of animal waste shall be limited to domestic household pets and must be properly contained within a bag with other household waste. Okay, so it, it goes in a regular bag and it just gets disposed up in the hopper. So we can change horse under 2A to just, you know... Um, Farm animal yeah. manure, if, if that's better. Yeah, because you get cows too. Yeah. I mean, typically people aren't bringing in cow manure, but, you know. I think that's the only, so it, it's, I put that because I think that's the only manure that people typically bring in. Yeah, so it course. limits it to the existing. And it's small quantity, any that we've ever had. It's been, you know, a little trail over the time. No, yeah, yeah that can be a small trail. Mm. Yeah. I'm not talking like dump truck load or anything. No, I mean, we don't know if anybody did or not. I always think so. What's the farm out of Mirror Road? Is there a Pacus? Yeah. 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 Take care of it like other way. Just spread it in the field. Yeah, yeah. they may just well, spread it. Yeah. That's what I do with my I think I think the only reason why this particular guy does he doesn't have a field to spread it in there. Well, like, because he's on the corner, right? Is. is that the one yeah, on the corner? Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. it going by the fire station? Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he hauls his in by trailer. That's the only one that we get. It's funny because when you were talking about this, I was thinking about that property. Yeah, once upon a time. What's the eggs that he sells? They're not I mean, going to eggs. No, I mean... <laughs> 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 if they were, you could make a fortune. If they were, you could make a fortune. Eggs. This conversation's going right down the
All right, so, okay, we'll, um, we'll take your suggestions. Yep. And looking good. All right. Yeah, I'm in a little um, lot, so. I don't know, one of the things that, I think the things that Kate brought up were, they're valid complaints. Mm -hmm. I don't know how we're going to fix them. That's the problem. Them. I yeah. mean, well, I don't really. If you own, if you own a condo, I don't care if there's ten in the building, if you physically own it and you live there, it's a you would be entitled, I feel, to a dump sticker. Well, they're residents. They're not yeah. just property owners. You can take out property owners and just have it say residents, and you're eliminating, eliminating some. I don't think you really have cause to eliminate residents who also, by the way, own property. Like the condos. Like, they're, they're a funny situation. You're I don't talking think, about Second Street? Yeah, I don't think you I can mean, really they have eliminate that. But, I mean, there's some things that you just don't. Well, so demo and recycling. Yeah. Demo and recycling. Right. I mean, if they're doing the, the right. right things about doing, yeah. you know, recycling and stuff, I don't. But it's a separately owned building, though. It's not like it's a six tenant each, unit. Each unit is separately owned. It's right? separately owned. For, yeah. Well, well not just each, each condo within each unit is separately owned. Right. Right. So right. that means it's not yeah. like a yeah. six. It's not a six unit rental building. So it's not. Yeah. It's not really like an apartment building. Yeah. It's it's you, you know they're residents. That's kind of what I was thinking. I mean, they're they're entitled to a dumpster mm -hmm. here, and and if they have to do something that's a big item, they yeah. they have to pay that. Really, the word could just be as simple as owner owner occupied. If it's owner occupied, you get a step up. That's another way, rather than residents, mm -hmm. you can do owner occupied, but you still have to provide it to tenants who rent mm -hmm. in a duplex or something. Or yeah, rent you a have house. To, yeah, yeah, you have to. So have like to six, uh, three or more, you may want to require them to have. A dumpster and no stickers. Mm -hmm. But the thing with that is now you've you pulled them out of the recycle screen because right. everything they have is going to go in the dumpster. Right. So. Or if they have a big item as well, that, that mm -hmm. takes them out. So you can, like, he's got a good point. You can give them a dump sticker and require that they have a dumpster. You can't require that they have a dumpster in this ordinance. That's housing standards. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's at the Right. That's in March. <coughs> right. But Which we just we just did that last year, didn't we? You can do it again. Dumpsters. You can do it every year if you want. It's up to the people. Um, so so this can only regulate who gets a sticker, not who has to get a dumpster. Yeah. And I don't think the increase that we're seeing over there has anything to do with Second Street or anything like that. That would be huge. If it was, it would, it would be a massive complex to, to be able to make a change. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I, just I think there are a lot of different factors. Yeah. I think it's that real estate is turning over a lot more than it mm -hmm. was. Um, there is more construction, more building permits. Mm -hmm. yep. um, there's just turnover of people, and every time there's turnover of people, people dispose of things. Mm -hmm. And we have contractors in town who may very mm -hmm. well be bringing in debris from. So I'm pretty sure there so is. So how are we going to solve that? Do we require them to bring the building permit with them before they can go? They'd have to. I mean, yeah. I think that that's what we should do. Yeah. I mean, if they have a legitimate building permit for Rollins, rather than they're going into dump, then that's okay, right? Because they're working in Rollins. If they're working in Rollins. But if they're not working, if they're someone who's going outside or of the town. Or we just ban contractors. Well, but you have contractors who live in town who mm -hmm. will want to put it on their truck because they use their truck for business, but that's their truck. They want to put their trash on their truck. And then you're not really going to control, like, so, so you would have to go further and say, you know, not issuing it to commercial vehicles mm -hmm. or, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. But then you're, you're going to get some... Mm -hmm. I, think it's, I think it's a tough no matter what it you do tough. because it's, it, there's no way that you can prove yeah. it. But at least you could maybe lighten it up a little bit if you would require them going forward that they have to bring a copy of the building permit that they're supposing of. Yep. Um, or, it, 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 but they could say it's theirs. Yep. It does say under general use, section 2, general use, the last sentence, any contractor who wishes to bring waste material from a Rollinsford cons construction site must secure a temporary permit from um, the select board prior to going to the transfer station. So that's something that you might want to, I mean, like rather than this board should not be handling that level of traffic, yep, I think. Yep. But it, you know the mechanism is there already mm -hmm. for them to get some kind of approval if they want to get rid of 
mm -hmm. construction debris. Like we can just change that to say they, they rather than a secure temporary they must secure a temporary permit. They must, you know, show their building permit for from where this the is relevant from. Right. And because when you're having a building permit and you're getting the job done and once it's complete, do you ever get notification that the job is complete? No. So you can close out that building permit? It depends on the project, and it de so it depends on whether it's something that is um, inspectable, that requires yeah. a Probably CO, not. or whether or not or it's something that just goes on forever and we yeah. don't really care if you finished your deck or not, you yeah. know, for example. Like, you know, it kind of depends on what it is. But maybe if it's something that's just like adding a deck and it gets done, it, we should have maybe something that indicates that they should notify the office to, that this is closed. And then someone can't use an old permit that we don't know about. It's been done for a year and a half. I think it, you know what I mean? Well, they do have issue dates or approved dates or both. I mean, they, they have dates on them. Mm -hmm. So you can regulate that, you know, they have to use it within a certain number of months from the date of issue or, or the date of approval or mm -hmm. you know, something like that. And that, you know, if they need a waiver from that or an extension and in that time period, then they would come to the office. Okay. There'd be some way to get an extension of that. Okay. Or at the time a, per a building permit is issued, issue a demo permit along with it. Like a mm -hmm. one-time, like a... Like so a, this demo like permit goes with this building permit. Mm -hmm. This is good for 60 days, say, a demo permit. And if, well, but they're, you don't want if they're redoing a deck, then they get the building permit to do the deck. The demo permit will, is there to get rid of Everything else that goes along with building that deck, mm -hmm. but it's only for sixty days. It would. I, I would. I think. I think the building permit already serves that purpose, but the building permit is already specific to what the job is. So. I think it's no enough way. that they can just show that and say, and that way the building permit already says it's a deck. Mm -hmm. It already has its issue date. It serves that purpose already. We could have a mechanism or a process by which the transfer station people could have a stamp, and they just stamp the building permit, and it just says, you know, disposed of, or you know, like just an enormous, you know, a big stamp that goes across the building permit, so that you cancel that one out. But it could be many trips. To it right? could be depending many on trips. the size yeah. of the job. But too. at least I mean, it's that, deterrent. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's a deterrent, and it would limit it. Mm -hmm. But so yes, it's more cumbersome. So they're they doing this instead of getting a dumpster on site. Yeah. Depends on the, yeah, I mean, if, if I'm redoing the deck on my house. Right, but I mean, on a major construction job in town, are they, I mean, they're going to allow to bring that 30 yards of stuff to the dump? As long as you pay for it. Potentially, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see that as being an issue. I don't, I don't see that as happening, but anything could happen, I guess. Do you see it happening that people are you think bringing truckloads from other sites that they're doing? I'm pretty sure I know of a couple of contractors in town that are, they couldn't be doing this much work in Rawlinson. And they, <laughs> why wouldn't they take yeah. advantage of yeah. this? I mean, it's, yeah. They're paying, it's they're just know. not, they're paying, they're just not. Yeah, but then I know we have what, three electrical contractors in town? Mm -hmm. I think there's three. Um, one of which will come in at any given Saturday with a, a van full of boxes. Cardboard? And, yep. But cardboard's fine because we get paid for it. Mm -hmm. But we don't get paid for the little wire ties, the packing material that's in there, the foam, all that sort of stuff. That ends up in the MSW. So it does get separated out, but, mm -hmm. you know. So, I mean, is it everybody? Yeah, I don't know. I was going to call it a perk, but you can't have a perk. <laughs> It's you know, so. yeah. I mean, yeah. It adds up. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'd does. be really interested in the public caring what if anyone has any ideas <laughs> as to how to yeah. how to regulate. I know we had a similar issue when Acton and we went with the, the demo permits. And that helped a lot. Is there an expense to the demo permit? It's just a piece of paper that's just paid to say that you does. can yeah. do it and then when you get it weighed then or whatever you're gonna do yeah. or you whatever just, you just it is. With this with this extra little thing that says uh, that this is why I can dump this yeah. This goes with this piece of property in Rawlinsford. Mm -hmm. so. Does that come like, I'm thinking about things that I bring to the dump. 
and I don't get a dental appointment for it. Like, I could cover, to cover, we, what did we do recently? Took off the, replace the covers that go on the radiator. There was like two of them, we bring them. We don't get a dental part for that, but we throw it in the, the, the metal bit. stuff, yeah. yeah. If it goes in metal, that's not an issue, we get paid for that. Oh, okay. So, it's really just those two bins that have the, uh, Oh, so there's a specific demo. Yeah, you got the little hill like that you climb up. Yeah, something. you got that little, yeah, sheetrock, yeah. two by fours, out of the deck. Got it. Old doors, old windows. Tubs. Yeah, bathtubs, the fiberglass bathtubs. I mean, we do a good oh, job of yeah. packing that stuff in. And I forgot to tell you at the meeting last month, they are accepting ceramic and all that again. Yeah, we're not. <laughs> I'm not playing the back and forth game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm not ceramic. So, okay. <laughs> yeah, in the last they've been going back and forth as to what they what they take and what they don't take. Why do they send the standard taken? Because it's, it goes back into what they're using this glass for now. They're using it for the shiny stuff on the roads. Or? No, it's actually used under your road. You can't use it on the roads because of the sun. Oh, they the can use it as gravel. Now, as base. I didn't know. As that. a base. They crush it. Yeah, they crush it like they do a rug with gravel now. When they put it under the road, there's gravel. Mm -hmm. And this town of uh, New Ipswich has been doing this for years, and they've saved over $900,000 in gravel. Uh -huh. Because they keep their own glass and they grind mm -hmm. it. They put it to a grinder and stuff like that. They have a pretty good article on it. Mm -hmm. uh, they accept us. I think they accept other towns at one time, too. You've got to be permitted to do it, and mm -hmm. now waste management has it, so I'm sure that what they're going to end up doing is covering their landfill with it, mm -hmm, once mm -hmm. it's ground. Mm -hmm. So it's going to save them, you know, significant money, but they're making money on it. Mm -hmm. They're still making that $30 a ton to bring it in. Yeah. Okay. I'd like to know what, how much it is a ton to, to crush it, though. Right, I mean, it's, I mean, it's not, yeah. It's not you can have, like, industrial drums to roll it or something, yeah, too, right? Yeah, the big crushes, the big, big, big rock crushes in, yeah. yeah. Crush it into three eighths minus. That's cool. But it keeps changing as the vendors change and what the vendors yeah. are going to accept and what the market can use. But that, mm -hmm. Waste management accepting the porcelain toilets yeah. and all that stuff now because what they're going to use it for is probably fine because they're going to be covering their landfills with it. I don't know how closely it's because you know how like steel is closely tied to the price of oil, whether someone will is looking to scrap steel or they just want to go out and make their own. I wonder if there's some other commodity that the glass is tied to. I'd be curious. This is all obviously not relevant, but I'm interested. All interested. right, I'm going to give this to Caroline yeah. so she can put your, your revision. Oh. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Um, so, are we all set on the revisions on the agenda then? I think so. Okay. Yeah, I bumped that one over that tonight again. Okay. So I will get a new draft for yeah. um, to Ed to make sure that it makes meets his intention, and then I'll send it along to you all that you're on board with. Okay. The next revision, but you you need to pr you need to be in agreement with the language before you bring it forward to a public hearing. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Okay. So. Um, you got my update on the grant. That I've sent that out. Yeah, you sent it out. You yeah, haven't heard back that though. You no, had 17, a date. 17th 17th, yeah. Okay. Of October. So we should hear something by the 18th, they said. All right, so when you the girl hear... Girl we talked to said it looks good, we've got everything we need. Okay. So. All right, that's good. We'll go from there on that. Okay. Um, and so once we have that, then we'll make a decision on the scales. There's mm -hmm. nothing else you have for information on the scales? No, the scales, no. Okay, okay. No. So. No. Did, and did you go with the, with the printer? Is it... Did you? Yes, I put the, yeah, the one with the you put the numbers down, yeah. 25,000 okay. and, uh, 25, yeah. and change. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're going to figure out how to do the whole kit and caboodle. So. All right. The um, other thing I have, if you're using this is kind of a neat thing. Give me a second here to get my email out. The legislature, legislature in New Hampshire has set up a small board, I think it's a three or four person board, mm -hmm. uh, to look into uh, recycling and waste in New Hampshire. It's a study committee, and they're taking testimony from different towns. Mm -hmm. uh, the executive vice, executive president, actually of NRRA, the executive director, um, Regan Bissonetti, Bissonetti, I guess her name is. Uh, she's only been here since May. Thought Rollinson might be a good town to talk to, as far as small towns, or to have us go and represent. 
Um, this Friday they're doing large towns, Monday they're doing small towns. Okay. I have no issue going if you folks don't mind me going. Yeah, I think that sounds great. Right. Yeah. I'm okay with it. So we'll okay. give them whatever input we can come up with. And Perfect. So. The more you know, the yeah. everyone yeah. can share. And yeah, great yeah. idea. Thank and I thought it was good because they reached out to, uh, to me to see mm -hmm. where we did switch from single screen to full recycling. You know, mm -hmm. what have we learned? What are we finding about pitfalls? How they can help? You guys switched from recycling to single stream and then back in a, like a short amount of time, right? We, oh, we, we did recycle, years. then we went single three stream, years. and then we went back. Yeah, I don't know how long we were on single stream because mm -hmm. I've only been here two years. Two to three years. We were yeah, yeah. 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 That's so we're probably a pretty good case for mm -hmm. exactly how it worked out. Yeah. 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 Good. So. Well, good. And I thought, I mean, it's going to be right after. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I got the email today and thought, well, I passed it by Caroline. She's like, what do the board thinks? I didn't think you'd have an issue, but it was nice to ask. Yeah, no, good. I'm glad. And I have no problem going up to concrete and talking to those folks. Oh, very good. You're doing all this. Let us know. Two days, wow. Yeah, whatever towns want to go. So, and it's only a short period of time to give you, you know, a couple, two or three minutes up to 15. Oh, nice. So it's just a short little barf and mm -hmm. where they said you can write up something and send it in, but I just want to go and see what's all yeah. about. Yeah, well, then you can talk to other people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hearing what's going on. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. No, that's, that's really the other good, good thing about NRRA. I mean, we we'll go to their meetings. At least, I mean, they don't have 12 a year, so we're, we're at least five of them mm -hmm. a year. Good. So. Yeah, we won't go on the next one. It's a little too. Yeah, yeah. they've they so taken our road for a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Usually it's held right in... Uh, it's right there. What? Epson. Chichester, oh. is it? Epson. Epson. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Which is close. Yeah. To Chichester. Yes. <laughs> so, but, uh, Good. yeah, that's all I got. Uh, all right. Well, we have an illegal dumping incident, which we'll be handling yes. and sending a letter. And um, so we'll be taking care of that for you. Okay. Thank you for doing all that. All right. I think that's going far enough. Yep. All right. Yep. Anything else, George? How about you? I don't have anything. You got anything for me? I don't think so. Do we have anything for you? I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah. So. You still want to wait on the computer, so we'll just hold up on that. How do we look financially? <laughs> well, um, we just had a disaster, though. <laughs> they're they're aware of the, of the yeah. disaster. Um, um, let, let us let's look at the numbers. Keep keep us updated next week, okay? We'll see what we can do. I have the rebudgeting thing here. I you know including the. The one we just voted in. Well, that, that's easily added. Um, so it really hasn't changed much. Also, um, Chuck's putting together third quarter. The third quarter ended today, so he's right. pulling together third quarter financials. So I can update the budget workshop with third quarter financials, and that way you can see how your rebudgeting numbers are relating to what our new dollars are. If that makes you feel better. No, I just want to make sure that we have a little cushion before you're, the end you're, of the year comes. You're, you're still doing fine. Okay. We came in under on the fire station too. Yeah, I saw that. Yes, with the lander I just sent. Yeah. Yeah. And it looks great. It really does. So good job for that. Um, yeah, give me till next week. Give us till next week or we'll. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's see where. Yeah, because we do have to do the. That's right. We have the third quarter review that we have to do. Okay. All right. Sure. I did take uh, okay. seventeen. Yeah. I did take seventeen hundred eighty pounds of aluminum over to Borough County today. Yeah. And that paid us three hundred and fifty-six bucks. Yay! So good. Yeah, that was five bales. So. so all the bales that are that are in there, not is, no. Is it? Look, something looks like it's plastic. No, not plastic. Yes. It is plastic. There is plastic and in the Quonset hut. Okay. No, nope, there's plastic in the Quonset hut. There is cardboard in there, and there is the mixed paper. Okay. And the blue top outside is covered plastic. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I saw you put some walls up. So now you're going to cover the bins over by the recycling. We'd like to put a roof over that. Yeah, those walls were have been up since last January. How come I never noticed them? What did you do know. differently? I don't know. I thought you just put them up. No, nope, those went up last January when we made the bins. We put those big dividers up. You did? Yeah. They had yeah. to to keep things separate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we do want to put a rope. I thought there were dumpsters in there. No. I don't do recycling. They're a long That's time my ago. son takes that oh, okay. for me. Yeah, so I was just trying. Yeah. I thought, they were, I thought nope. we put new walls. The first one is, is, a, is a dumpster, but that's glass. 
Okay. But the rest of them I just are just bins with the walls. Yep. Jersey berries on the bottom and uh, walls from there up. That's why Gary looked at me really funny when I said I like your new walls. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh well. Yeah. yeah. We do want to put a roof over it. Uh, we did get some pricing on some rafters. Rafters. I called them the wrong thing when we went to look trusses. At trusses. Okay. Pre-made trusses that go up. Yeah. I think the trusses were what around twenty two hundred. Right. It's not a lot of money. So. Yeah. And then we were going to uh, yeah, keep the snow put tin roof in, put tin yeah. over the top. Yeah. So, but we just really just kind of watching the budget to see when we can pull the trigger on it. Okay. I mean, we'd like to get it done before the snow flies, but if we don't, we'll go through another year with it. But we were still, we were still pulling snow out of it in June. We were literally. Yeah. When we finally got down to the bottom of one of the tin bins that we still snow with it, or ice, yeah, good Lord. and they don't like it, they don't like it mixed with water and ice and mm -hmm. whatnot, and that, it just makes for a mess, too. Yeah. It's, it's yeah. not a good way to it. Yeah. yeah, as much as you tell people to rinse, the rain does a lot of it, and it just, yeah. Eventually, you run the risk that they're going to reject your loads. Yeah, your yeah. whole load, yeah. for a few pieces And you might lose a vendor who won't take your plastic Again, anymore, yeah. or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So clearly you have a problem with harness because I saw your little oh, yeah. sign. Yeah, and um, that's because of the... People are not cleaning. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, I, don't I mean, I don't expect people to wash out with a scrub brush, but yeah. at least rinse. You have to rinse it, yeah, because you're going to have the yeah. whatever. Yeah. 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 yeah, but people don't rinse their tin cans. You finish the soda pop and off it goes. I'm wondering where people to go to the sink and rinse out the can. I do too. <laughs> Set it on the side. I do too. Yeah. Well, if you keep it in the house, you get, I mean... Well, yeah. you don't want the ants yeah. either in the, the summertime. Yeah, the ants are the beast. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? so we yeah. always rinse ours as well. Yeah. But that would be our next major project, I think, would be to get a roof over that. And, yeah. And put the trusses, because it's about 2200, I think, was the truss, the trusses. The truss system, yeah. Then we got to put a little bit of, put uh, some corrugated over that. Mm -hmm. And I haven't priced that out yet. That's not big money, because we're only, only talking 20 feet deep. Mm -hmm. So, and then a 110 foot deep area. So. Yep. All right. Well, good job, guys. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you. Have a good night. You too. Thank you. We'll see you next week at your place. Sounds good. All right. All right. So, 2020 budget planning. So, um, that's just about how you want to tackle the budget, but I would suggest you table that one until we deal with the bold ones, if you don't mind. Oh, yes, you did tell me that, sorry. It's okay. okay. I just right. want to make sure that we conquer some of the things that are more time sensitive. They have to, right. Yeah. All right, so cruiser lease application. Okay, so I have an application form for an alternative leasing company. This is um, it needs a signature. Um, I still need the chief to fill in um, some of the details about the vehicle mm -hmm. there, but this is going to be um, at least a 3% decrease in the interest rate. Right. This, yeah. Yeah. I, I think we should go for it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. And there's no, there's no, because there's no, um, like, penalty on what he had presented before and at least company and all of those things, right? So this is not going to be your final sign-off. So if you want to change your mind after looking at more things to sign, you mm -hmm. can do that. You're still set up to take a lease through the dealership that the chief mm -hmm. set up. So you can still compare terms, but no, you can... You wouldn't have a penalty though for backing out of that lease that he's already... Put through. That, that is my understanding, okay. but we still have to work that out. I'm trying to do two paths at the same time okay. because this is happening in short order. I didn't yeah. realize that this was a almost 8% interest rate that yeah. the dealership was providing, oh, which is insane. extraordinary yeah. for yeah. municipal. Yeah. So. Okay, no, I think we should try, definitely try to go through that. Okay, um, and it's a three-year lease, and that was the same lease? Um, it's the same term. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, it's just about the vehicle details. So who has to sign it? Um, you, if you okay. would... Um, we should make a motion for yes, the Yes, and then you sign it, please. And then I'll yes. sign it. Okay, so you want to make a motion? Uh, a motion to uh, sign the credit application for a new lease for the police cruiser for three years. All right, I'll second it. Any discussion? Don't you think we should put a company name in that? Tax-exempt leasing corp.
will modify her. Okay. Sounds very beneficial. Yep. All right, I'll second that then. And uh, any further discussion? No. And oh, can we modify the motion to oh, yeah. authorize the chair to sign? Authorize chair to sign the credit application to tax exempt leasing court for at least for three years. All right. You got that, Sally? Okay. So all those in favor say aye. 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 director's visit on October 7th if we have our meeting with highway as well as budget we could get that's fine I just yeah. I just wanted you all to Are see okay that and decide that? It. Yeah. Um, reschedule definitely you know whatever okay I will reschedule do you want your um, the remainder of the meeting at the highway station are you moving the whole meeting or do you want to pick a time and come here for the official meeting workshop portion of the evening. My only my only concern is if we needed something for here when we were doing that, that we we wouldn't have access to it down there. I mean, it, right? Well, I also don't want to have them just wait up and then have to walk out behind us. Is that a thing? Mm -hmm. I guess I'm. I don't know where this is. This is at the transfer station. Right? Well, no, the highway department. The department. So, so, so first we'll we'll in the barn before you get through to the gates to go into the transfer station. Oh, I guess Next to the salt pile, there's a, yeah, there's a the highway barn. Pile, right? yeah. So that building there, so we're going to meet there at 5.30 for you all to meet with the employees. Mm -hmm. So the question is, what time does the official meeting start, and is that there, or is it here? If we had it there, then someone would have to lock up after us. Oh, I see your point. They would have to. Yeah, so yeah. probably ought to move I think here, we in should, which case you If it's at 530, I would say that we should be able to get everything said and done by 7 and move our meeting here. Okay, so I'll post for 7 here. Sounds great. So so do you think, you think that's too much time? That's an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's, you know, you, you'd be amazed at what they've done to that building, and I think it's worth, you know, yeah. 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 yeah, I want to, yeah, so let's, I want to do one, too, so. Yeah, yeah, let's just go ahead and we'll do that, and, but we'll come back here for a second sure. for the rest of the meeting. I think okay. that makes Makes sense. sense to me. Okay. Thank you. All right, and the MS-1 and the MS-1B. <coughs> okay. These are the last two documents required for setting the tax rate. Mm -hmm. In reviewing the MS-1, the MS-1 fee is just the assessed value for um, the property within the district. So the MS-1 is the property within the whole town mm -hmm. um, and also whatever exemptions and credits we have. It has come to light in our internal review of the MS-1 before we approved it and sent it to the board for approval that there we have five or six nonprofits in town, or, or properties that are owned by organizations that are not taxable. In order for them to not receive a, ta a property tax bill, they have to file paperwork every year. It's not our responsibility to remind us to do so. We have two organizations that did not file paperwork this year. So. I just wanted to bring that to your attention, that as it stands now, they're slated to get property tax bills, and you're likely to get feedback about that. Um, since assessing finally rests with you all, you have the authority to change my, you know, what I'm saying. You can, you can choose to change this. It just sets precedence. So, it's something to be very thoughtful about and proceed with caution. There's a further concern, which is that what really caught our attention is a property of considerable value, which would be tax exempt, which was just not valued at all. And it was not valued at all because of a 
conversation between the assessor and previous board member about um, whether or not it would really be um, not taxable and setting the precedence of valuing it and calling it non-taxable when in fact maybe it is taxable. To my mind it's pretty cut and dry that it's it belongs to these people, it has a value, so we have to report its value. And then further, it's not taxable as long as they're handing in their paperwork. And by the way, they didn't hand in their paperwork. So they've never received a bill that I'm aware of for this property. So I very much anticipate there would be feedback about them receiving a property tax bill. But again, it's not our responsibility to remind people that they have to do, you know, the error that it was not, its value was not in the assessing program is, um, does not negate somebody's responsibility to fill out the paperwork. Okay. So here we are. Okay, so they are now in, in the system as taxable. Um, they, I need a determination from the board. Um, I don't remember. I, I think he left it as not taxable, but you know, Who's he? the assessor. Okay. Um, because of what it is. Well, you know, because it is. Yes, exactly. Okay. Because it is not a taxable However. property if they would file their paperwork. And um, Andrea spent the day making sure. We, you know, we both don't remember receiving any paperwork. Mm -hmm. Um, she looked around all over the place. And okay. So, so making a, so we're on hold for our SM, uh, MS one because of this. Yes. If we submit it in there with this property being taxable, and then they come back on us and they give us the form, how does that affect our MS one? The M so so we're claiming something higher for taxes than we're really going to be. Well, here's the thing. They have to file their paperwork by a deadline. If they don't file the paperwork by the deadline, they didn't file the paperwork for the deadline. That's so the deadline's right. passed? Yes. Okay. Can they apply for an extension? Uh, once, once we issue them a bill, aren't they going to try and apply for some sort of status change? Mm -hmm. um, they can apply for an abatement. It doesn't mean they get it. An abatement is really more for, you know, I disagree with the value of the property. Mm -hmm. It's really not, you know, it's it's not really proper to ask for an abatement because you forgot to file your paperwork. Like, to my mind, that's pretty cut and dry. You have a responsibility as a, you know, non-taxable property owner, exactly, to file this paperwork. Um, they have not asked for an extension. Um, and this is, that's there's all. two companies that are... There are two. Okay, so... Um, has this happened before? I recall it happening before with this other one, which is valued properly. Um, it's just small, volunteer run, and I think they just don't have consistent people who are focused enough to remember to file the paperwork. But I, I recall um, maybe four or five years ago, I believe they got a property tax bill. So. Okay. So that's another consideration, though, is, is equity. I mean, if, if, you know, you have five or six of them in town, and, mm -hmm. and they're supposed to file the paperwork, mm -hmm. one does, but another doesn't. So with the MS-1, which is due, if we, we have to make a decision soon, because this is late or due soon. Both. Now. It's late. Yes, both of them are late. It's not at this point holding up the tax rate because it's um, they're reviewing other things on our behalf and with other communities. Mm -hmm. But if we wait very much longer, it really will hold up the tax rate. So what you're asking for us to do is to we make a motion to have the taxes sent to the companies that have not filled out their forms and see what happens. And we can file our MS-1. Because if we try, I mean, you're right. It's not our responsibility. They know that what they have to do. I get that. And it's every year they have to do it? Okay. So if they don't do it, it's on them. But if we don't do it, we're going to be late with this in our tax rate setting. It's going to be delayed from this every moment that we wait. Potentially. Which doesn't mean that you absolutely have to decide it tonight. I don't think waiting until next week is going to 
really affect anything. Just think about, does, is the extra week really going to change your mind? Like, what is one more week going to do for me? Well, <laughs> I, I, I mean, unless, say, they, absolutely, unless they come but, in with the form. And, well, but even then, the form is late. Yeah, it's too, too late. Because yeah. the tax exempt is a property status. It's an organization status, right? So if they let it lapse, then the, the property is no longer tax exempt. Well, no. No? No. It is presumed that they are still a tax exempt organization. Mm -hmm. they, they, it's just a form reporting to the town that, yes, we are still a nonprofit and still owning this property, and it is still for a nonprofit use. That doesn't mean that their status with the IRS has changed. Mm -hmm. It's just their responsibility to send in paperwork that affirms their status and that they're... Do they have to recertify with the IRS? Uh, no. 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 Well, nonprofits do. You have to recertify. Well, you have to do annual reports. Right, right. Yeah, just annual not, financials not and things like that. But not like not re reapply once you're not right. a nonprofit unless something changes on their side. But. Unless it's unless yeah. it's revoked from right, you, right. but yes. So so that's separate. They have their nonprofit status. They're reporting to us that this is still for nonprofit use. And these two businesses are they likely to? Because it seems clear that if the right thing to do would be to say, pay your taxes that are due. But then, what impact is the is it going to have on the MS one? Like I, I guess this sets the this sets, states the value of the properties, right? The MS one, and yes. then we determine resident or property tax rates based, which is uh, the same thing, based on what we need to generate. So through, right, you right. Know? How much money do you need to raise? Which is how much you're going to spend mm -hmm. minus how much you're going to bring in revenue. So how much money do you have to raise in taxes? and divide that by taxable property. So you have to eliminate the elderly exemptions, the vet credits, and these nonprofits. So if we expect to collect this tax, then we'll probably be undersetting the rent rate if we're not actually going to. Well, that's a really yes. interesting point, because yes. actually one of these was not valued at all for the structure that was on this property because of a conversation between the assessor and a previous board member, which results in a large value that, depending on the board's will, will be reported this year, which was not previously reported. So that increases the overall value of Rollinsford considerably, which thereby lowers the new tax rate from what it would otherwise be. And so that's interesting because that sounds great, you know, for all of But if you don't get it, right. Well, you're going to get it. Well, you, so you're going to get it because, well, so they didn't file the paperwork. So they're going to be taxed for full value, so the tax rate is going to be less than it would be otherwise, but then the following year they file their paperwork because they learned their lesson, and then the tax rate feels like more of a hit than it might have otherwise right. if values were just consistently reported and either consistently exempt or not. Yeah, yeah. so you, you, you get the benefit one year and then you take the loss the next year. Well, and also is it reasonable to expect that they will pay? the Because if they can if they can t take the town to, because they'll, what we do, we'll put a lien, and then they can try and prove that, what what's existing uh, case law, I guess, is what the question would be, what happens in similar, this must have happened before, maybe not in this town. Um, that's a good question. That's an unknown, and we can look into it. Um, can, we, can we process this without adding that assessment into our figure? Well, you can, but then you're telling the, the, the state, this is the value of all the property in Rollinsford, except that it isn't really. But we'll be telling them that next year when we take it out. Well, no. <laughs> What's changing, so the value is always the same. The value is the value. What's, what should change is only, is it tax exempt or not? And that depends according to whether or not they file their paperwork. Mm -hmm. So the assessment is fine. It's whether or not they're going to pay their tax. Yeah, well, it should, be, it should be assessed, right? So it should always be assessed, right? It doesn't, it, shouldn't it always be? Well, that's really the point of the form, is please assess your value. Report to us that your assessed values, yes. Yeah. Why was it reported as zero? I don't understand. Like, what was the reasoning? Is that why you had a conversation? I, I don't really believe in the, in the conversation, so it's kind of hard to, you know, it, if it's, 
some people believe there's gray area where I don't think there's gray area. But so, um, for example, there is case law. So the property value, you can't just be a church and um, say, this is a house and because we own the house, it's not taxable. You know, if they want to rent out the house and that's income, that's a taxable use. Mm -hmm. If the house is for their priest, so their priest has something to live, somewhere to live, that supports the mission of the nonprofit, and that is a non-taxable use. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like that. There was a church in Durham, and this went all the way up to, I believe, the Superior Court, that they had parking spaces that they rented to students in Durham. They had extra parking beyond what they needed for the church, so they rented them to students. So that's income. But it didn't really align with the mission of the church. It had nothing to do with the church. But being a church. Our church is allowed to rent out the church for like a for a non a non um, so for something secular. Well, so that's part of their building, which is itself the church. I think that's a little bit different. It's yeah. not the primary function. But, you know, these were like designated parking spots that were for students because their parking lot was bigger than it needed to be. Mm. So the church lost that in the courts. And that, it's not as though they lost the whole property, but that portion of the parking lot got profitable status. That, that was taxable, rather. Taxable mm -hmm. status. They could do it, but now they have to claim the income. Well, you're going to pay property taxes on that on square that footage. Yeah. 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 So, so that's kind of where we're at now. Um, so some felt as though it was better to not set a precedent. You don't want to give them an exemption and then it could go to court and they tell you, you know, well, they gave us an exemption for this many years, so it must have been really exempt. Um, but the law doesn't really work like that, and I don't believe that it ever would have been considered not exempt because the land is definitely for the use of the nonprofit. So, you know, I don't think that really qualifies. So I can't really speak to what the justification of the argument was to not list the value, except that they felt that it was better than listing it and giving it an exemption when they didn't believe it would be exempt. Oh, weird. That's strange. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which, by the way, shouldn't happen between. I, I'm not sure. Sounds kind of illegal. <laughs> well, it, you know, I mean, you're, you're swearing to the value listed here on this report. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I mean, that that's what I heard. Mm -hmm. I don't. I, I I did not speak directly to either party. Um, you know, that's an email I got from one of them about their recollection. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't entirely make sense to me. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that that's true. So I really can't speak to how this happened, except to say the value is large enough to be noticeably absent from the report. Okay, so your recommendation is that we go forward with putting the value and that it's taxable, that it's taxable for, this year, for this year. For those two. And then once that no decision has been made, you will able you will be able to do your MS1 and MS1B. Yes, I'm just, you know, that is my recommendation, but I'm just alerting you that likely we're going to receive feedback about that, which, you know. I don't want to pay my property tax. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, it is what it is. You know, you don't file your forms. There, there are consequences in life for, mm -hmm. you know, missing deadlines and not doing what you're supposed to do. So, um, they'll, I would think, remember for next year. Okay, so this, how does that work? This is the second bill of the year, to, so they didn't get billed the first time. They did. They got billed in, in the spring of yes. this year? Well, everybody does. Yeah. So the first issue tax bill is always half right. of the total you paid the previous year. Right. And if it goes up, it pays down. And then, and then we set the tax rate, yep. and you pay the difference. Yeah. So you might all of a sudden have gotten, you know, it took us a long time to figure out your vet credit, you got your vet credit, so now it's going to all be applied to this one. Mm -hmm. Or else, you know, mm -hmm. we did decide that, you know, your acreage was incorrect and we have adjusted it so that the balance mm -hmm. is, you know. So this is the real tax bill. The first one is the estimated. So the estimated is subtracted from the full year. So we're doing the full year now mm -hmm. and we're only billing you for the balance of 
the full year minus what you paid in the beginning. So the affected people did not get their first bill, though. Correct. Okay, so they... Well, they, they got their... Well, they didn't get this bill. Right. It's going to be very different. So... They, they got... They did not get a tax They may bill not have, one of them would not bill. have gotten a bill. The other one had extra land and got a really small bill. Okay. So in either case, this is going to be quite a shock, yes. Okay. So are we going for the whole year? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what that's where we're at, I, yes. Okay, because okay. they didn't do the half. Because they didn't, okay. yeah, because this is how the cycle goes. Should we issue, um, trying to think what would like lessen the blow? <laughs> Could we issue a letter saying, hey, you just, you know, you're going to get a property tax bill this year because you didn't file this form in previous years you did. Make sure you file it next year. We could do that. Just be, just know that we were thinking about this. We talked about this a lot. You know, if, if you, that's a little bit better than sending out a reminder. I just don't want people to expect that we're going to correspond when we don't have to correspond. Yeah. And then sometimes we do and sometimes we don't. Right, and then they could say, you didn't remind, remind me, me, so it's your fault. Yeah. I think, yeah. I think we just go For sure they're going to notice and they'll give us a call. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, I think. Yeah, I think we should... Um, Add them to the assess the property, add them to the MS one, and uh, bill them out. Bill them out. All right. Okay. You want to make a motion? Well, we should have a motion. Mm -hmm. We should make it official. Sure. To include both non um, both nonprofits, full value of both nonprofits as taxable. Okay. Due to non. Um, due to the, um, the non submittal forms. Okay. So I'll make a motion that we um, issue full taxable. Um, Bills to the two nonprofits that did not file their, what are they called? Paperwork. They filed their oh, exempt paperwork. paperwork. To I didn't announce. Know. Okay. Back. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank so, you. you're welcome. So, now once this is done, you can you can do the MS, and that's on the portal, right? You, you just submit it on the portal. Is that something we have to come in and sign? I believe it has one signature, and I don't even recall if that's the assessor or if it's you. Okay. That but I'll let you know. You signed last week, right? That was the the authorization that you could submit it. Mm -hmm. Right, because it's really <laughs> convoluted. Right. But, you know, in the end, it's there's a draft of it in the blue folder there. You can okay. see, you know. But I'll let you know when it's signable. Okay. My guess is it's you. Okay. Cruise or lease? That's just a duplicate. We can move on. Okay. Transfer station pass request. Okay, so this is the third time about this, I think it's the third, or the second time about this same property on Silver Street, single family dwelling, rented out. So the property owner who does not live in Rollinsford is requesting a, even a day pass or a week pass or something to um, dispose of clothing and toys and I'm not sure what else. Those are the things he recalled offhand. There are things in the attic left by previous tenants. Okay. This is the one we thought was a duplex on Silver, but it's a single family home. Right yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we've done it before, so I don't see the reason why we wouldn't. Yeah, yeah I would, I don't know, maybe, it'll, maybe a week. I don't know. Sometimes I don't know if they can get it done in a day or something, but I would say maybe give them a week pass. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. Thank you. Do you want a, want a motion on that? Or are you okay with a verbal? I have a motion. All right. I make a motion that we issue to a homeowner on um, a non-resident homeowner on Silver Street a uh, one-week pass with transfer station to dispose of items left by tenant. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All right. I'm going back up. To, let me see. Let's see. I've got all the highlighted ones, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I'm, yes. Okay. That's great. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. So highway's done. Okay. Budget planning. Um, so, I, so how, how do you want to tackle this? Where would you like to start? What do you mean? 
Um, you can start by talking about salaries or take a, um, because that is, you know, the biggest overall chunk of um, the budget and most of where increases are. Or do you want to go through each section of the budget um, individually? You mean going forward or tonight? Um, both. I mean, you can you can try to so so you have a budget workshop planned for the seventeenth and yeah, I think, and then you can work on it Monday night. But I think that's so. You know, so it's just about you know how many times can you meet. And then how do you divide up all the topics and finalize that budget in the time frame? So it might be good to know, for example, that if you, can, if you can meet three more times, then you can pick maybe um, two or three sections a night. Okay, so yeah, we're not meeting, I'm not doing another budget thing until the 17th. I'm, I'm really nervous about this, to be honest with you. We can, I, uh, we the 14th go on this day. I can do one on that day. I don't know if we've decided not to or you guys. Well, we always have to. holidays up. I am away. Oh, um, I but I, I, don't know. I will be home off. that day, but I don't know what time. Um, but I'm just, I'm really nervous about our, our lack of having it yes. together. I mean, we're starting presentations on the 23rd. Yes. That's CIP and highways on there right now. we got to have the answers before then. Uh, is there an, I think we should try to do another night the week of the 7th. Or dedicate after the um, highway meeting strictly on budget. I thought that was the case. Is that, was that? It wasn't. It's a regular posted meeting. I prefer to keep it that way in case there's something, something that's time sensitive that house. really needs to get dealt with. But you can certainly table most things and deal directly that with budget. That's a good idea, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just, I'm getting really concerned that we are, um, we're really getting close to the mark here. Because sewer and water, I don't know, I mean, um, CFP and highway, and then they go, the next one would be police, fire, and cemeteries the first week in November. So, I mean, we're not, we've got to... But I would encourage you to have the whole thing figured out before yeah. they even start because you need to know how each of those puzzles fit into the big picture. Right. Right. All right. Let's, um, let's dedicate uh, the remaining of our meeting with an exception that if we have to do something that just all of a sudden come up, we can do that on the Monday the 7th. And keep in mind, maybe we'll have to meet another night that week. If, I know. I know. No water that week, too. The ninth. Oh, they have the ninth. Mm. Well, yeah. um, I got the chimney sweep. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I do, but that's not going to interfere with this. <laughs> um, well, I mean, we just have to. We, we really are behind, so I mean, we just have to. I was thinking about the budget. I don't know. I'm sure. I don't think to Google it, but I'm sure that there's tons of guidance to come up with. You know, when you have a proposed budget, it's gone up by, what was it, 5%, something like that? 5.5? I think it's at 4.7. Nice. So if we look at that and we say, I have no concept of, of if that is too high or too low, is the appropriate tackling of it to decide on a, a bottom line figure what is acceptable to us for the for it to go up and then by category, what is acceptable for this one to go up? You know, do we think that highways should be raised 20% and fire should be low, lowered 5%? That's, is how, what's a good way to tackle it? Because going line by line really doesn't make any sense because it doesn't give you any picture of the total. Well, it's ultimately necessary that you agree on every line, but you're right, right that, you know, it starts with the, you know, it's, it's, I think, very helpful to start with the big picture, what is affordable, but then as you start evaluating what all the proposals are, um, everything starts to look quite attractive, right? Well, you know, this is really necessary, and that's really necessary, and so it just, um, 
you can certainly start with that mm -hmm. and see how it changes how you approach things differently. You know, for I guess I guess the response is it's different for everybody. Like if you if you think that salary salaries are, are a pretty easy conversation, you can go forward with a certain percentage, see what that does, and then okay, so then you know, you can just cross things off the list that you think are easy to cross off the list and it gets you to a certain point. Mm -hmm. And then from there you can say that that's livable or not livable. Like, so you can go from A to B or from B to A, but ultimately, you know. Now we came, we came to a decision on the salary increases, right? Did we not? No. Come up? I thought we had you, you had sort of a consensus, but not a real decision that no. everybody seemed to offhand be in favor of 2%. Two. So I plugged in 2%, but I don't think that was a real, that's a just for now, I yeah. think. Um, so we took that into we thought it wasn't going to be less than that. So, but the CIP spreadsheet, one of the other tabs, has a pro, like a projecting model in it, which is really valuable. You know, um, it is important to think about homeowners. What is affordable? Cost of living is going up anyway. People on fixed income, retired people. You've got to, you know, what can the demographic of your community handle? What is the demographic of our community? Um, I think the average age is 47, and we have a... Um, is that old for town? No. No, I mean, we, we have a pretty healthy mix of people. Um, so... Yeah, so it says nothing, really. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, it's not that it says nothing. I mean, you know that you're not Berlin, New Hampshire, and you know you're not Newcastle. Is Berlin old and so so Berlin? Now. You know, all the industry's gone. You you can't get people Berlin's to live there. Way, way up north right, and so their property cool. tax is really high because their property's valued at almost nothing because the industry's gone and you can't get people to live there. Yeah. And then there's Newcastle that has the smallest property tax rate in the state, or nearly so, because their property is so expensive. So in the end, you know, if they pay the same amount of taxes, you know, it's just that our homes are worth more because they're all waterfront. So, um, but theoretically, it's a more affluent community, they could support a larger increase than people in Berlin who are already a poorer community. I guess that's my point. So we are really right in the middle of all that. We're, we're neither of those. For whatever that's worth. Yeah. Well, um, I agree. We, we need to be looking at the bigger picture. By We don't necessarily have to nickel and dime the line to lines, the few changes of that, but what the bigger picture is per department. Mm -hmm. And to see... Because that's what it comes down it. to, yeah. essentially. Is, is well, and, and not just by department, but you know your transfer station tipping fees are really high. Mm -hmm. That's going to, like, the, your bottom line. Like, there's no way to have that not affect your bottom line. Mm -hmm. um, there's not much that you can do about that. They, they don't have a whole lot for supplies or other expenses at all in that department. Mm -hmm. There are other departments with much bigger amounts of money that have more flexibility mm -hmm. and more staff and more everything else. Mm -hmm. So it's not even a per department. It's a, how do you get all the pieces to work together, you know, to fit, to make something reasonable, you know? Well, they're each, they're each of those departments are going to say that their priority is more important than this right. one and so on and so forth. Right, and this so is their job. That, like, yeah. they're, they're telling so, you what their priorities are for their, you know, and then you all have heard that and you get to determine, mm -hmm. you know, what's a what's a middle ground, what's reasonable, what's affordable, mm -hmm. what's necessary. All right. So uh, do we have all of the budgets and everything, that, everything that's been turned in is on that spreadsheet that was sent to us and we have it all, right? Everyone. Yes. I did change the, um, I sent an email about this today. We got the bill for hazardous waste. Did I saw that. Oh, I saw that, yeah. Yeah. We probably need to increase that. Right. So, so I, is it based the price based on what they bring in? Is that uh, so? It's hard to tell. 
I mean, how is that? I assume that a lot of it's going to be batteries. And... So well, they take everything that everybody did. They, they take the full cost of the whole day and they divide it by the number of people who showed up to get a cost per person. Oh, okay. And then they charge us for how many people of ours went. Of our people went. Oh, okay. That's how they determine the price. And they take the whole day versus they only pay your share yeah, they, that whole day. Yeah. Wow. So they, we could be paying a lot more based on what our 18 people brought in. And we only budgeted $1,600. Right. And we under-advertised this. That's my point. Yes. Like, so maybe it's next probably going to be quite a lot next year. Could be. Yeah. So I plugged in for 2020. I, I revised this to plug in the actual for this year, which I think is still going to be insufficient if we properly advertise it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Why don't you send us with the the adjustment that you made and send us a, the uh, um, whole budget again, and we just need to really look at it before next Monday and make sure that we, if we have questions, they write them down. Um, yeah, I'm almost wondering, if, I mean, can we, I'm wondering if it's a worthwhile exercise that independently outside of the meeting we go through it and come up with, you know, if we can deter, if we decide on a, a point, what's a reasonable overall increase, and then aim for that. You mean each one of us do our own, Yeah. because we can't do it well, separately and talk separately. Oh yeah, that's yeah, what I mean. yeah, do it independently, yeah. and then at least that way we come in and say, well, "What's our thoughts on this line?" Yeah. Well, let's let's all talk about the line. You know, that way we come in and we each have our own thoughts on it already, yeah. and then we can discuss it. No, it's a pain, we, but well, I think we should do that at least by department. You know, as, if it, that we've done our own thinking about yeah. it, and then we can all talk about it together. All right, why don't we go ahead and do that? And why don't you send that to Miles and see if he can do um, anything so. with it as well. Maybe he's on a plane. No, no I mean when, he, when he's on a plane. When he's on. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so let's, like I said, let's dedicate Monday after the um, after the highway um, and just kind of crank it out as much as we can. Um, so then there's. Um There's also CIP. So when we talk about the big picture, it's also what are we putting in CIP? Um, what, or rather, what of CIP are you going to propose this year? And also other Warren articles, for example, the Conservation Land Trust, mm -hmm. things like I was that. Just thinking about that. Yeah, so that's part of the big picture, too. So if you can determine, that's another approach. Determine what you think is really necessary of those items. Because those will all have a tax impact, some more than others, depending on how much CIP money they're getting supported by. Okay, so do we have the most recent update of the CIP? Yes, I emailed it to you. Okay. So, I, you know, I know, Denise, that you didn't like the recommendation. You didn't care for their final recommendation. So, um... You know, this is two parts. The more immediate part is, what are you going to propose and fund this year? Mm -hmm. And then the second part is, what does the CIP plan look like now? Mm -hmm. um, the first part is more immediate because it affects the whole budget conversation. What can we afford? What's reasonable this mm -hmm. year? Um, but you have a spreadsheet. So, um, if A lot of those projects aren't 100% funded by CIP. So whatever it affects us in the capital items, this, well, for next year if they're not 100% funded. That's my so you point. have to look at it very carefully. Exactly. And if they're saying we're going to do it in 2020, we may not be able to do it in 2020 based on all of our other criteria that we have to take care of for 20. So well, we just have right. to be sure we're really careful by that. We can't, I mean, theirs is only a recommendation. It's not a, it's right. not a final. Uh, we are, so we have to look at that really mm -hmm. very and then there's the generator, which has little or no funding from CIP, mm -hmm. but if you don't put it on the warrant, you might end up with a really expensive emergency next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And did that get fixed? Yeah. It is. I, I believe it's fixed. Okay. Yeah. All right. So How much can a generator cost for building? 20000 Are you That's kidding me? Was it 20000 It's It's. Yeah, well, it, it's five it's digits. Okay. Because I, I have, like... Family friends have generators for their house, and I don't think they power the whole house. It must be the case. It must not. 
Well, mine, well, this is an installed one, so mm -hmm. mine was, I think, 12000 for mine. An installed one? Installed one. Oh, okay, because I'm thinking of just this little portable gas. Oh, no, no, so no, 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 no. Okay. This Look is up a there. hardwired, totally okay. installed. If you look between yeah. the front door of Town Hall and the front door of the police department, there's kind of like a little hut there, and it's yeah. housed in there. It's got its own, you yeah. know. Is that because this is an emergency building? Yes. This, this is a public safety the building if yeah. something happens. Yes. Yeah. 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 And so is the fire station, which they have one as well. Got it. Yeah. Something but otherwise. You know, I wasn't, cold. <laughs> I wasn't dragging on the generator, so I had my hard wild and got it, got it as well. But yeah, just when the lights go out, it goes on. And ever since I got my generator, it never happened. Oh, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well. The town I grew up in, you know, Barnstead, if you ever heard of it, power constantly. All the time, throughout the whole year, you constantly lose power. Here, never. It's wonderful. I don't know why. But yeah, we, we've been very, we've very been little tree trimming. Yeah. Tree trimming is what keeps yeah. it on. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Ever since so we made a month, specific a effort a couple of years ago mm -hmm. to super trim, and oh, that's helped cool. a lot. Yeah. 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 I love it. Okay. Um. So yeah. All right. SS adjustment. Yes, if you want to do it, the board had um, thought that it might be a good idea since it seemed as though it wasn't going to benefit. Um, the person who was contributing anymore that you could you remember adjust back three years, three years oh, 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 oh that's right so this is just a report back that I spoke to the auditor about it he's happy to do it he's estimating it would cost about six hundred dollars for him to do it but it would um, what's the fee now I don't have a calculator but it's uh, about a hundred and twenty three times. Um, 26 times 2.5. 79.95. That's very approximate. So that's for like two and a half years because we stopped a few months ago. Mm -hmm. So the clock is ticking. So right now it's not three years. It's two years, nine months, two years, eight months, whatever it is. Where is was that three-year figure right? Did you look that up? Um, he said it. Yes. It's okay. Right. Did you also talk to the other party and tell no. them that they could do that as well? No. But I, I certainly can and oh. will. I okay. just have not. Okay. He can definitely do that? I don't know that. Oh. Like, oh. It, why would they be able to do it if we could do it? In oh, theory, no. I, you know, I would never presume to understand yeah. how these big agencies okay. function. But I can, I can ask... Um, so you're saying that's the auditor to get approximately say six six thousand five hundred. It's, it's like we'll go a little lower. So if we're going to get six thousand, and this is going to cost us how much? You said approximately, approximately six hundred dollars. Then we should do it. I don't know. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, absolutely. Mean, we might as okay. well. Yeah, and that's why we went we again, gaining six thousand back that we spent out. So okay, I so would go ahead and I'll make a motion that we go ahead and um, instruct our. It's the auditor that's doing it. Yes. The auditor to do our request for reimbursement of Social Security. Uh, the employer, so it's for the, we would do it on behalf of us and on behalf of the employee affected. No, we just do it on us, right? It says three years, three months, and 15 days. The employer also files for a tax refund with IRS on Form 941X for both employer and employee for the same time frame. Oh. So, so here's the thing. I mean, it's kind of an all the one same thing because if you're if you're withdrawing on on the town behalf, mm -hmm. then it affects the employee. Mm -hmm. So I think I think they are they would have to be connected because. Um, oh, then that's good. Then. It's and good. then we have to do like redo the, all the quarterly reports and you know the W three and his um, his W four his W two at the end of the year, which wouldn't have tax impact. Um, so it wouldn't change his taxes, mm -hmm. but just for reporting purposes. Mm -hmm. I think it's because FICA probably isn't tracked by how much the employer pays versus the employee. I think it's just FICA paid. Mm -hmm. So probably they just have an amount attached to his social. I will verify that, but that okay. makes sense to me. I'll that it would just be all in one thing. Yeah, yeah, just so you have it. This Thank was you. from um, Social Security Administrator in Hampshire. All right, so there's a motion on the floor that we will proceed with this process. you want to second that? Second. All right, any further discussion? No. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, so go ahead and go over. Okay. Thank you. Recreation planning. You've heard nothing, haven't you? There's a school board meeting a week, like, in, like 
Thursday next week. I'm going to come in and talk to you. I, I, I'm just thinking of something. I don't know if that would work, but I'll, um, I'll come in and talk to you sometime this week. Okay. Okay. Um, but that's not good that we haven't got any. Should we send another you know, final notice about looking for people just to see if we get it? Should we just send a re reminder? I can do that. All right. Reminder to do what? Um, Sign up for the committee. We're looking for Otherwise, people. Otherwise, sending a note, like a re-notice. Just it as in the program. If it doesn't, we don't get any committee members. All right. Avatar contract? The contract expires at the end of the year. So um, for budgeting purposes, I've requested a new contract for the board to consider. Since the past two years, the board has only approved a one-year contract. They're only proposing a one-year contract. They will consider a multi-year contract that would conclude with the reval in 2022. This, so keep in mind that it's going up every year. If you do a multi-year, it will lock in the price better. So mm -hmm. that's worth consideration. They will contract the supposed increase probably, right? Well, probably, yeah. yes. So, but, but less so than what we've experienced yeah. lately. Over the last few years, it's gone up a lot. Um, this year, it's going up more. Be so, um, they give us a certain number of days. We have right now 11 contract days in a year um, that they use to work on our things. They do the spring pickups, they go through the building permits, they adjust values, they review exemption um, and um, elderly exemption applications and veteran credits and abatement applications and all these things. Um, all those things are in the beginning part of the year. I had Chuck create a spreadsheet of how many hours they've used so far this year. We are at 8.4 days. And they are proposing to increase the contract to 12 days from 11. Um, I don't think that's really necessary because we're past the really heavy time, the heavy assessing time of the year. So um, I don't know if they would consider keeping us at 11 and just cutting us off if that you know a topic arises that passes that threshold or something. I just think they're, um, you know, they're being proactive in a way that doesn't necessarily um, best meet our time money management needs. So I don't, I don't think we need that full day per year. Um, but then it's increasing on top of that. So I can request to see, I, I can see, I, I guess I'm looking for feedback from the board about um, do you want to see a multi-year contract? Do you want me to reach out and see if they will consider an 11-day contract, which um, may be less likely if we are looking for a multi-year contract, because they would likely be forecasting increased use over more years, like later. You know, one year you can say, okay, we'll see how it goes, but they might want, not want to lock us into only 11 days for two or three years, for example. Um, the other thing is I'd really like to see how we can insert language in some way to get better um, customer service about some things, more mm -hmm. respo like faster response time to inquiries. Um, That's my main concern. I don't some think that we like get that. turnaround calls back and we get to wait on things. Um, yeah, and, and it's and not that, in the contract. Right. So I'm really hung up in this, this situation because the contract says that they handle everything from A to Z. Mm -hmm. But if you really want them to handle everything from A to Z, then that's going to take more time and then they're going to increase your number of days. Mm -hmm. So really for that price, they're not going to do A to Z or else you're going to end up paying more. Like you, you've got this sort of chicken and egg kind of mm -hmm. problem with this contract the way it's currently written. If they're, if they're going to do A to Z, then, then they're already doing that and they shouldn't be increasing the time. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it, it just kind of doesn't make sense to me. Um, and then we're not getting responses from emails. Like, phone calls. 
like we would hope to see. Mm -hmm. So, um, that being said, um, going out to bid, while it sounds like a lovely idea, we're using their software. Um, they have been, I believe, the only contracted assessor since we've had one, or at least for decades. Mm -hmm. So they have a lot of institutional knowledge, which is really helpful and valuable. Mm -hmm. um, which is not to say don't go out to bid, but it's um, a time-intensive pro um, process to do the bidding, evaluating the bidding, but even more so transitioning into different software and or people that are completely unaware of property here. Is it worth you, you having a phone call with the owner of the company? I know that they're relatives of the Dow. But our lack of getting responses when we call or replying to emails or phone calls and saying, you know, we don't want to have a separation however we want the service, you know, that we're, we don't believe we're getting. Um, I think it should happen. Um, I don't think it's enough. I think there ought to be language. No, I'm saying, yeah, we're going to, but I think but talking about that how person may not language. even know that we're not getting what we think we should be getting, you know, right. but I think that, you know, absolutely we need to have language as well to make sure that it's part of the contract and maybe a penalty if it doesn't happen, I don't know, something. you know, something that gives us our rights as consumers to get the service we think absolutely. we're paying for. So, but it also might help to talk to the owner. Because who we deal with isn't the owner, but it's a relative of the owner. I, yeah. So, um, I don't know, what do you think? I agree. And in my mind, I could be wrong with this, in light of all that, it doesn't make sense to do a multi-year contract. If we're already not really getting kind of the service of paying for it, kind of sounds like. And then they're saying, oh, we've guaranteed, I mean, the, our requests haven't gone up in volume to them, right? The amount of Well, no, I don't it. think so. But the other side of it is, to do a one, like, so, if you're not specifically going to prioritize evaluating the contract, evaluating the service, putting it out to bid, and really staying to, diligent on, on the contract and the service, you might as well go with the multi-year, you know. So, um, it just has to stay on the top of the priority list, I think. I, I think it's just best due diligence that if you're going to go with a one year, I see your point, and I don't disagree, and I think that's why you all have gone with one year, is because you know, we're not really happy, we're not really happy. Um, something better. But so. yeah, we haven't been able to dedicate resources to make sure that we're getting what we think we need. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the other side of it is, like, if you want a one year, I'm okay with that. we got to stay on it. Mm -hmm. Is there any chance that someone in that company is going to break up and do their own thing, and then we'll go hire them, and they'll have all the institutional knowledge and mm -hmm. cost less? Yeah. Never know. <laughs> Anyone? <laughs> At this point, not likely. Okay. Not likely, yeah. Yeah. But it's a good question. Okay, so I'll keep the conversation to a one year, but I can tell her that that's why we're talking about one year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe they'll be like, totally sorry, I didn't know about it. We'll put in tons of language about... And then we can review different language. Mm -hmm. And then we'll say, great, two years, sign up. So. But I, so how do we feel about the 11 days versus 12 days? Well, if, the, if they're going to make the 11 days, why would I add another one? Because the contract is guaranteeing they're paying for 12 days even if they don't work it, right? Yes. Well, they're going to work it, though. That's the same thing. Like, if we were to say, okay, let's add it to 12 years, but you give us a, a rebate if you only work 11, they're going to work 12. They're, they'll find, they're, there's always stuff to do. They'll find yeah. stuff to do. The other thing is, we don't really know how much time they spend on um, abatement mediations mm -hmm. and some of these things that don't take place here. Right. And so... Are there a lot of abatements over here? A half dozen. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it kind of depends. You always get more abatement applications the year of a reval mm -hmm. because very often properties go, values go up, People are shocked by that, and then they, uh, you know, apply for an abatement, and so they plan for that. Mm -hmm. um, but then, typically, in subsequent years, the requests go down. Mm -hmm. All right. So. All right. So we'll stick to the eleven years. What happens if we go over days. and eleven? Sorry, eleven days. <laughs> Thank you. And um, I'll have a conversation.
conversation with them. And okay. We'll see where we get with that. So is there a contract here to be signed already, or is it something that we have We to do have a contract for you to evaluate. I, um, Did someone get that by email? Yes. Okay, so I've seen that. Okay. But, um, it's, yeah, it's, it's but, pretty vague. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we can counter with a... Right, and to that okay. point, if you all like have a specific, any other thoughts in reading it over about things you think it doesn't address properly okay. or stuff you'd like to see, okay, um, I can talk to them about that. Okay, all right, but we can't drag it on though. I would say within look at it if possible. Well, within the next week, and then we'll discuss it next week. It's budgetary, right? So right, so we have to have the. It, it can't be dragged too long. on. Yeah, right. agreed. Okay, all right. I always think that's spelled wrong, what, avatar. Thing. It is. Um, well, that is to say, you know, an avatar by the different meaning of the word is spelled otherwise, and yeah. that is how they spell their name. Okay. So you're not wrong. <laughs> All right, Space Needs Committee Police Consultant. Um, I don't have any update on that. I believe she has her data and she's working on it. I haven't heard from her, so I, I don't have Have they been in-house yet? No. Okay. Are they talking to people yet? No, that I'm aware of. Oh. But I believe they wanted to evaluate the data before they did that. Yeah. So what I'm not, data? Um, they're they're getting our call data from Stratford County. Oh, okay. You know, so I believe they wanted to work with that before they. I'm not completely surprised because I think they wanted to have an idea of what the data said okay. because that would inform their questions. But we need to make sure that it's done this year and completed this she, year. Yes, and I mean, that we got that guarantee, right? Well, I, you know, I, I wouldn't go so far as to say guarantee, but they're waiting on their payments until they do what they're supposed to do. And um, she assured me it would be weeks and not months. She said six weeks at the time, so okay, it okay. should be okay. All right. Okay. Primex cap agreement. Okay, so there are two of these in your blue folder. Yeah, um, right. What they say essentially is you are agreeing to keep Primex as your insurance carrier for the next three years, and in exchange for that, they are going to limit the percentage by which the premiums can increase every year. So, in other words, if you sign up with them, they'll guarantee that the rates not go up by more than, I think it says 6%, I don't recall, 3%, something like that. Um, we were currently enrolled in this program. It has expired. We have put it out to, to bid before. I think it was three years ago when we had. Um, there, you know, most municipalities, government entities, including counties, um, are with Primex because they are not a traditional insurance company. They are a risk management um, group. Um, which means that they offer, operate by different laws and are thereby far cheaper, a risk management pool. Um, so they're cheaper than traditional insurance companies. We, we did put it out to bid about three years ago and, and it was remarkably less expensive. Mm -hmm. But here it is before you to decide. It's kind of something of something else that I'm thinking of. Like is it one of those, um, you know, pyramid schemes or something? It might be um, if I Not if I is, well if so if you don't put in this if you decide that their website address might be something else you definitely get other things come up. Okay. So do you know what the average of the increases have been year after year? Single low single digits. Okay, so this one is saying a maximum of seven percent, and this is the uh, property and liability. Mm -hmm. So that you're saying it's been. It's been well within that anyway, okay. but this is guaranteeing it. And this, right, and this is the workman's comp, which is guaranteeing maximum 10%. So the thing to know about these is that it's, the way a risk management pool works is that we're in a pool with other small towns that have a renewal date in January, mm -hmm. and it's based on the actual activity. So, um, depending on what natural disaster happens in a certain area of small towns in a given year, for example, you know, it could change. It, it's, an, it's an actual, it's not just an insurance company that pays its employees and tries to minimize risk and, you know, it, it operates in a different way, it, much like the health insurance company that, you know, the rates are very much based on the activity of the people in the pool. Right, right. So what did you budget 
plan for in this year's budget for this? That's a good question. Um, I budgeted for the same premium minus what I know our credit to be, and I'd have to separate what our credit is, but we got some kind of notice that um, last year too we got a credit and we didn't end up paying for what we were initially billed because they, so here again, not an insurance company, they received more in premiums than they needed to cover claims and expenses, and so there was redistribution of all of those. Is this the property and liability or the other one? Um, so both of them, and actually all, there's a third, which is um, which, unemployment. If you didn't go to a company like this, you wouldn't be getting a rebate. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And for how much equipment we own and people and mm -hmm. stuff, you mm -hmm. know, it is remarkably not that expensive. Mm -hmm. So it's really I, insurance, basically. It sounds great. The 10% the cap is, is basically reinsurance. Well, there's, there's, so you're agreeing to three years. If, if, it, if, it, if it's a 2% increase, it's a 2% increase. If it's 8, it's 8. It's just not, it's guaranteed not to go. They want your guaranteed business in exchange for a guaranteed cap. So for, um, I did, um, yeah, so the actual, um, the bill will come out in October. Um, The new amount is slightly less. It takes into account, so it's down by 0.8, um, and that's with the credit that we, mm -hmm. so it's not a budgeted increase. So what would we put as a budget going forward, though? Would well, you it's go, very like, much, the 7% and then? It's very much like health insurance, yeah. where, you know, kind of pick something. You I don't go know with a max, and then you go down. Or you go with a halfway in between. Yeah. You know, with, you know, what it's been lately, yeah. I mean... What did you say it was last year? For the workers' comp, do you know what you have to do? The, what the percent increase was, I guess. So, I don't have a percent increase from one year to the next. It's not going up. Um, it's going up very marginally. Um, it decreased slightly, like $239, because, mm -hmm. uh, is what I budgeted for this year based on what the credit was that we received mm -hmm. this current year, which they told us we would get again next year. So, I don't know, I think we should do it. I don't know what do you think? Yeah. I mean, it's not to exceed, so if it's lower, it's going to be lower. The, I mean, yeah. the only downfall, if it's a downfall, is that you're agreeing to go with them for the next three, three years. years. Yeah. yeah, but really there are not any great competitors, so you're yeah. not really... It's funny, they have person. language in here that allows you to just terminate if you don't have the appropriations available. They have to by law say that. Oh, really? Because you because can't... Because they can't sue us for... Well, because you can't otherwise approve it. Okay. Because if the budget doesn't pass, you, you just can't spend the money. Yeah. yeah. Is that a New Hampshire thing, or is that... It's a New Hampshire thing. It, it, nice. may, be, it may be otherwise, but it, yeah. it may be elsewhere as well, but it's, it's part of this how this town meeting works and how um, the authority of the people at town meeting. You can't do multi-year contracts without that clause. Nice. Sounds good to me. Yeah. All right, why don't you make a motion. Uh, motion to enroll in the CAP program, or Primax, for the next three years to um, CAP the maximum contribution to workman's for work with workman's comp and property and liability program. All right, I'll second it. Any further discussion? Okay, so who signs this? Thank you. Um, you do. Please. I do. Okay. So all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, motion passed. All right, so... Do they publish valuations of the system that we're in? I don't know that they, I mean, in, in some, somewhere, yes, yeah. um, and you can request it, I'm sure. I'm not sure if they put it on their website, but I'm sure you can call somebody and ask for it. You're probably subject to not very many regulations. Okay, so um, our WSD concerns, um, we're going to just table that, um, I think, at this point. Agreed. 
policy review. Um, um, town administration standing items, board members activity. Water meeting next week. Uh, if there's ever a Stratford Regional Planning Committee thing, I'll go to that. Other than that, nothing. Let's see, I have nothing. Nothing for town anyway. Except for the board meeting. That's it. Okay. Uh, there's a planning board meeting tomorrow night. The Silver Street subdivision remains on the agenda. They're making more progress with their application. I don't know that they'll reach final approval tomorrow. Um, there's also a preliminary discussion with a property owner who's going to be submitting a site review application for the November meeting. Um, all pretty standard stuff. Um, there is a meeting on October 17th for Lamprey Regional. Um, they're starting budgeting, so Ed and I will both go to that. Okay. Um, budget season everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I got an email from um, the people who are doing um, the LED conversion project. Yeah. Um, because I followed up to say streetlights. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would like to see a streetlight proposal to see if it qualifies for the same mm -hmm. program and what the cost would be so we can do it now or later or sometime and know what it is. Um, it doesn't fall under the same program and the return... I, I thought this was interesting that the return on investment doesn't qualify for the program. Mm. So I was really surprised by that. I asked him for his figures about you know how he determined that so we could better know what is the upfront cost and how long does it take to get it back so that we can find... Without that figure, you can't choose to prioritize it or not prioritize. We know that, we know that there will be savings in the utility rate. It's a 36,000, approximately, 32 to $36,000 line. Um, so it would be a considerable savings. It's just about how much money does it cost to get there. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to, I'm looking at that. Are we putting this building in the budget for this year? Um, you certainly could at any time when the board feels comfortable. And when I send you the rebudgeting workshop worksheet with... No, I meant for 2020. No. Why? So, well, because it was still up in the, I mean... You all get to do with whatever you want to do with the budget. I hadn't yet because it's still a conversation for this year, depending on seeing how, you know, you, you all wanted to see if it can fit in this year. Okay, so has Highway and uh, Buyer been done yet? They're not done. I, um, a container of supplies is arriving shortly. It's all, it's all happening. Okay. That was quite a while ago, though. It is. It's, know. it's you know, nothing is ever as... So what happens, though, if we don't get the project complete by using this year's money? It's not about project completion. It's about obligation. Yes. Okay. Okay. I just want to make sure. So okay. I would say you've got until probably the first week in December to decide and take we action. Go forward. And then after that, you're going to be into next year's funds. Okay. All right. I, just want, I would like to have seen what they did with either one of the buildings before we went forward. And, and you may still, I mean, it, you know, once they do it, it'll be really quick. Yeah. It's just about setting the stage and getting the stuff ready. Because it's a much ready. smaller building than this one. Yes. You know, so I mean, that definitely should take long once they get going. Okay. All right. Anything else on your turn, Mr. No. Yeah. Okay. Review of correspondences. Um... Can I just do the purchase order 1769 for the BMB offset printing? Um, rake it or leave it flyers? What we got in the mail. How about that? Yes, $445. Yes. So, I'll second it. What is it? It comes so out of the brochure in the mail? I don't check the mail. <laughs> <laughs> do you know how old I am? It just came this week. Okay. I got mine, I think, today. I um, think I got mine yesterday. Do you know if you just mow over the leaves, then they kind of scatter away, and then you're done? They say just that, leave that them is there. The oh, is that what you're supposed to do? Just 
Just leave it. Well, supposed to leave them there, right? Break it or leave it. What other what other options are there? Well, you can bring it to the transfer station. Uh -huh. the, so the point is, don't like um, dump I them. Read the flyer. Well, read the flyer. Right? <laughs> so I won't body cut. I'll read the flyer. <laughs> but it's a, it's for stormwater compliance. It was something that we needed to mail out for yep. the stormwater. Cool. All right. So all those in favor say aye. 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 All right. Imagine a lot of stormwater is about. I should go to like one of their memes because I'm interested in it. But probably a lot of it's about managing nitrogen in the water, right? Um, the state, t well, actually, the EPA tells us in what ways our waterways are impaired, yeah. and then um, we need to target our outreach accordingly. Yes. Do you know that at one point, um, and this is the case anymore, but I think it was in maybe 2011 or something. Salmon Falls River was the number one, considered the number one in the country, most endangered watershed by uh, environmental degradation. I don't know if it is anymore. It's a very I interesting. Don't think it is anymore. I it, think they've done a lot of work. Well, it. they have done a lot of work. Yeah. You know, the tanneries made it a different color right. every day, mm -hmm. and um, the estuary at Great Bay is fed by um, Salmon Falls and was impacted by all that. Yeah. Cool. Okay, this is a summary inventory evaluation from this one for 2019. Okay, so we talked about that. That's just the draft copy. The MS1. The MS1, oh, okay. so we don't sign this? Okay. No. Okay, draft copy. Which is what you were allowed to print after you submitted that you were allowed to submit it. Yes, but now and now you're allowed to print it out. Yeah, and, and now there are things at changing, at and you can see the copy. Yes. Okay. Um, this is federal tax credits. Oh, okay. So, yes. So this is about the two apartment buildings on Bacaris Drive. Um, it's just a notification that they are filing for tax exempt status. Um, because, which really means that they are, you know, they're getting a tax exempt status, and because they provide affordable housing, they're um, they will accept Section Eight. They will work with people through the housing authority. Um, they're looking for feedback. I would suggest that you not provide any because it's sort of um, it's a fine it's a, it's kind of a fine line, but but it's up to you to provide. Feedback. On the one hand, affordable housing is um, is important and necessary. Um, I'm not sure that you would want to stand by a particular property owner and whether or not they're entitled to it, though, um, without knowing more about it. But that's really essentially what it's notifying you about it that they're going through this process. It's like the past so it's not do anything. Yeah, it's just a notification. Yeah. yeah. Rule. This is done in process. Items that need follow up. Yeah, we did. did uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I think we already dealt with this. This is the. This is the that FYI. FYI. Yeah, that was just. You've seen that. That's yeah, just, I, all of the rest of that, I think, is. Okay. What's that PO behind you, though? It's in the job. Let me show what it is. Um, Repainting a foyer. Oh, that's. Oh, uh, right. We're still waiting for quotes on other quotes. We've got um, two other painters looking at it, and it's just hard to get them to be responsive, but they're aware of it. And we're okay. Waiting. So hard to get people, especially where we've learned this house now, small jobs are like, no one wants to do them. If it's not 10 grand, they're like small potatoes. Yes. Okay. So I'll just put these. Okay. Well, we sign this. So yeah, you just don't even put it. You, you don't okay. have to even. Yeah, you just, just put it in. Yeah, the just apartment. close it, and that's yeah, that's great. And Thank you. And then there's cemetery deeds in the red oh. folder. Cemetery deeds. And what is there? A, oh, is this that we changed it so that it didn't say um, town clerk? Town clerk. Just with this. Yes. So you're gonna be the witness. Okay. okay. Should we wait till Miles is around? Do you no. need all three to go? go you just need um, a jury. You can come in at any time, yeah. but really it's valid with two signatures. Okay.
So should I make a motion? Mm -hmm. Make a motion to uh, make a motion to sign the number NT one nine oh three D to Brayola and NT one nine oh four. Okay, I'll second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 needed to revise this too, so it says it's hand and seal on this day. Well, nobody's going to seal it. That's really a notary, right? Oh, that's not what it is. Well, it yeah, not it's not to seal it. Uh, you want to just go for it and just... I can note it to them for next time. Okay. I don't think it really, you know, impacts okay. its validity. Okay. All I can cross off, set its hand and seal. Sure. Or, or and seal only. Sure. Right. And we are on this uh, 30th day of September. These must be things that people like keep with their their life paperwork kind of mm -hmm. thing. So just deposit box. Yeah. Yeah. If they lose it, do they still have a right to the property? Kind of like if you lost the deed to your house, like yes. Your deed. <laughs> well, you know the registry has it. Like right. if they lose this, like we still have a copy, but it's still better if you don't lose it. Yeah. Why it's written on this nice uh, card stuff. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Alright, so then you can send that out to us. Okay. Do you need to know yes. what addresses there are? Or anything? 1903 and 1904? Yep. That's another one. Yeah. Alright. That's good. That's good. That's good. Alright. Community input. Wake up. Can <laughs> 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 wake all on? Alright. Um, we are waiting on public No. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Second it. All right. Good night, all. Carolyn, what is this part of it? I'm sorry, this part as well. Yes, both. Okay.